Our next topic for discussion are just the various properties of all these operations. Just like in normal arithmetic, plus multiplication, division, subtraction, have all these properties that you can imagine. Things like two negatives make a positive. Things like you can distribute multiplication, all those things. You can rearrange things. All of that, we have a bunch of different properties. I will try to talk about these in some vague terms. For, for the most part, and and or behave a lot like multiplication and addition. Typically, in some applications, they may write or as a plus and and as a multiplication, even in electrical engineering, that is more common than maybe some other fields. But it shows up in various places. So we have things like or and and you can swap the order completely fine. My name is Nick and I live in Columbus is the exact same statement as I live in Columbus and my name is Nick. You can swap those. Same thing with my name is Nick or I live in Columbus. Another one is if you have three or more statements, you can re-parenthesize in a funny way. We call that the associative property. The idea that the order in which you do the operations doesn't matter. And if you really go down sort of some mathematical rabbit holes into the field of algebra, whether or not these properties hold commutivity, associativity, distributivity, all of that goes into the field of algebra. You can get into some really deep rabbit holes. There's places where these things might not exist or work in the way you expect. A very common one that you will, you will actually see most likely at some point if you continue with any math is linear algebra. Matrices, you can't necessarily swap the order of multiplication of matrices, it turns out. So we have all of those. The ones that are important for us, there's a couple of these that will show up a lot. The, first, the commutivity and associativity, being able to rearrange and all that, pretty standard properties. So the ones that might be a little weird, double negation. My name is not, not Nick Painter is one way in which you can do that. You can do two negations, though you just cancel each other out. Another important one is the distributive property, which works just like you would imagine if you were to write out things with mathematical symbols. So off to the side here, let's write down an example with math. X times Y plus Z is equal to X times Y plus X times Z. That is our normal distributive property from multiplication. And if you look at what we are doing, we are taking X times y plus z, and then that becomes x times y plus x times z. To really write out the symbols that are showing up, the exact same thing holds here. We have p, we have p or two things anded together, and we're just distributing the p or. So we have p or q and p or r. It's the exact same thing. We just changed the symbol that we wrote between the things. Originally, it was a dot and a plus. Here, we've modified it to be a v looking symbol and a caret looking symbol. And the exact same thing is true if you use an and and an or switch which one was which. You just duplicate the symbol that is on the outside of the parentheses, if you notice. We duplicate the or in the first instance and you duplicate the and in the second instance. Yes, the thing you are distributing is that operation. The other most important by, by a lot are the next couple, which are De Morgan's laws, which is how do you negate an or and an and, which is if you have not P or Q, when you distribute the negation, you sort of switch everything is the way I remember this. We have not P or Q becomes not P, the or becomes an and, and then not Q. So you're taking the symbol and then distributing it to all of them. Everything sort of gets its own negation. And the negation of an or is an and, it turns out. The same thing holds for and, where you just negate everything and again switch the and to an or. The ones that are a little weird are the stuff to do with the implication. That symbol inherently was already a little weird. So both its negation, which we have as number 11 on this list, and the actual definition of it, it turns out is a little funky. I'm going to leave this for you guys to think about on your own, but the implication is actually the same as a particular or. So the P implies Q is the exact same as not P or Q. That is often very helpful for making sure that you get the right truth table. I often make sure to verify the truth table in my head by remembering this thing that it is not P or Q instead of remembering it as it implies. With that in mind, we can use De Morgan's laws, and I'll start demonstrating this. If we have not P or Q, if we wanted to negate that, we could use De Morgan's laws, which says we sort of distribute that negation and get not not P. Then we switch the or to an and, and then we have not Q. And then using our double negation property, we have P and not Q. So in the first instance there, we use De Morgan's law 
And then the second instance, we use the double negation property. Sometimes people off to the side will might, might write down for themselves as little comments what they did. This is De Morgan's, and then this is double negation. This is not strictly speaking required at any point in your execution of these problems, but it can be helpful to just keep track of what you've done, especially if you need to go back and either show your work to someone else or you want to make sure that you did the right thing. And by writing down these comments, just like you would in coding, it can really help to make sure you understand what the heck you did when you look back at it in the future. We then have a couple of other properties. We aren't really going to deal with those and a couple of identities we'll talk about. These are kind of like what you might expect in math, like one times any number is the number zero times any number is zero, things like that. So we have true and a thing is the thing, false and a thing is false, true or a thing is true, false or a thing is the thing and all these other properties. Most of these you could just work through the truth table if you really needed to. I'm not going to dwell on them, but they are some useful identities. You could call them just like you might in math to call zero times anything being zero, zero plus anything being the thing originally. All of that sort of same parlance that you would use to describe normal arithmetic operations. You can use to describe these Boolean algebra operations. The idea of manipulating these sort of symbols, ands, ors, implications, negations and trues and falses, all of that is often referred to as Boolean algebra because Boolean for the true false nature as associated with the type in computer science and then algebra because the idea of moving symbols around and doing arithmetic with symbols is called algebra it turns out.